Vintage handkerchiefs are my favorite thing to shop for at antiques and thrift stores, but I recently bought a beautiful linen handkerchief, this beautiful linen handkerchief, which I put in the wash and seemingly ruined. However, I think that I can turn this into a piece of heirloom textile art. Let's see if I can do it. Here are my materials. I have my handkerchief fabric ready to be transformed. I have a good pair of shears. I have a linen cotton blend from Robert Kaufman for the background fabric. I have an embroidery hoop, a DMC embroidery floss, and needles for hand sewing. I have fusible interfacing, which will stabilize the fabric. I have a water erasable marking pen to transfer my design, which I'll show you in a second. And then a couple of useful optional things, a uh, fray check and a uh, quilt basting spray, uh, which I will be using to attach the flowers to the background fabric to make it easier to sew around them. And this is the design I'm using. <clears throat> so this is what I need this for. I'm gonna be transferring um, this, this lettering onto the background fabric. So it's, it's clear that I'm probably not going to be able to use this part. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and snip this. Um, I think I'm gonna do it like this. I will come back to this other piece. Oops. I'm gonna come back to this. And I've got my fusible interfacing. And I am gonna use this to stabilize these flowers and this black background fabric, which I'm hopefully also going to be able to preserve. Now the flowers have been stabilized. Um, as you can see, I did not do the neatest job here, but that's okay, because that part's probably gonna get trimmed off anyway. I have a little bit of extra, but I'll hold on to that. Uh, I might be able to use that still. Here I am using the window as my light box because you can't beat free. I've transferred the lettering. I've included the border. I'm going to be using an oval frame, so I want to know where my boundary is. And I've also isolated each of the flowers so that I can start positioning them um, and decide how I'd like to arrange them around the name. The frame arrived yesterday after I filmed the last clip. I am super excited about this. It's going to be beautiful if I do say so myself. I have an arrangement that I like, so I'm going to start basting the pieces down. I've spray basted the pieces down. I'm not a big fan of this product, so if anybody has any recommendations, uh, that would be great. Please leave me a comment. Uh, it was just what I had on hand. So anyway, now that everything is tacked down and trimmed, I'm gonna hop on my sewing machine and do some applique using a satin stitch. So I finished up on my sewing machine and it's looking quite puckered, but I think once it is pressed and stretched, it's gonna look fine. Uh, as you can see, I did a straight stitch along the edges that are not gonna be visible. Um, and yeah, I'm ready to start embroidering. Here's a quick look at the back. I'm 
I'm using two strands of DMC floss. And I really like the look of negative space lettering. So the background is gonna be black. I think it's really gonna pop. And from now on, I will be taking still shots of my progress. So you can see how the embroidery is coming along. Oops. My stitches are too big. I need to make them daintier. Trim that. I've been working on this now on and off for a couple of months and you know in a leisurely fashion I have pressed the fabric still looking a little bit puckered inside the lettering but I think that'll even out once we stretch it I'm really happy with this This message will be facing the wall, but someday she's going to see it. Applying fray check to the edges here. The embroidery is ready to be mounted, and I'm just gonna use this piece of foam board that came with the frame. By the way, love, love, love this frame maker. They're on Etsy, check them out. Everything they make is gorgeous. I'm using plain old masking tape to stretch each side evenly across the backing. It took me several tries to get the fabric as taut as I wanted it to be and to get it centered just right, so I'm glad I used fray check on the raw edges. Fortunately, I was able to stretch those puckers out of the lettering. I knew I'd be filling in the flowers and leaves with pink and green DMC floss, but I should say that the linen was getting increasingly frayed even just in the course of carrying this project around and taking it in and out of its little project bag. So if you try something like this, keep looking out for worn spots. Apply fray check when needed, and when it's dry, then you can stitch over it. I am so pleased with how this turned out. So if this video has inspired you to take some beautiful but maybe worn out fabric and transform it into something pretty awesome, I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you make. Please ping me on social media. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.